Welcome to Power in Jesus with Apostle Johnson Powell. Those that have ears, let them hear. Those that have eyes, let them see. Watch and be blessed. Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Apostle Judson Powell, and this is Power in Jesus. And I'd like to welcome you to our Bible study. And we'd like to stay on the theme right now of spiritual warfare and, and fighting unclean or demonic spirits. And uh, one of the ones that I want to talk about today, or the one that I would like to talk about today, is the unclean spirit of perversion perversion. So we like to talk about perversion. And first of all, let's get a, a working definition of what perversion really is, because a lot of us, we don't even actually know what perversion is. And here's my, here's my uh, definition that I like to use. And it says that basically perversion is any time that we take something that's in God's creation and we use it outside of the will of God, or we use it for its unintended use. And that's perversion. And what it does is it leads us into sin and into disobedience. So anytime we take something out of out of its intended use, then what do we do? We are using it in a perverted way, or we are opening the door to perversion. And I just like to so so uh, give an example of that. So for example, uh, take a handgun, or a, well, let's say a shotgun. Okay, if I give two people a shotgun, I give one man a shotgun, he goes out and he hunts food to feed his family, which we know is something that's in God's will because why God gave us animals and, and you know, for meat. He said that they would be meat for us. So the animals and the plants, those are what we eat. But then you have another person that has that same shotgun and they go around and they threaten people or they kill people or extort money out of people using the shotgun, right? So we know that the, the, these things are what? These things are against the will of God. They are, you know, they are things that God has told us that he does not like or he does not want us to do. So you, the same is the same shotgun, but it's just the different usage of the shotgun. And that's basically what perversion is, is anytime you take something out of its, out of its God-given intended use. And we know that everything, and this is another thing that people uh, have to sometimes have a hard problem with, is that everything in creation, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, evil, whatever it is, everything was created by God. All things are created by God. And, and we know that from the scripture, because if you go to the Gospel of John, God, John says in his gospel that what that that there was nothing that created that was not created by him. So we understand that everything in creation was created by God. And why? Because God gives us free will. We can decide what we want to do or what we don't want to do, but we have free will to do it. All right. And, and so God is not going to stop you from from sin and God is not going to stop you from disobedience. He may correct you, but he's not going to stop you from doing it because you have your own free will. You can do whatever you want. In fact, what does it say? All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So you can do whatever you want to do. That's up to you. But the bottom line is, if it's, if it's disobedient or if it's, in a, if it's sin, then God is not going to back you up on that. And so anytime we use anything, in fact, some people even use the scriptures, they pervert the scriptures by how taking them out of context, uh, using them as a way of putting people into further bondage. Scripture should never place people in bondage. They should be to set people free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the scripture should never be used to abuse people, to put people in further bondage, or to try to keep them, uh, you know, or to keep them in your church or to or to, uh, or to, you know, or to put you in a, in a better position or in a higher position or anything like that. That's not how scripture is supposed to be used. Scripture is to be used to exhort and to correct and, and, and to rebuke and, and those type of things. However, those things are to be used in order to help set somebody free, either deliver them, set them free, or to heal them. It's not to be used in order to put them or place them in further bondage. In other words, you have to learn how to minister the scriptures in love and in peace and, and, and with, and with uh, a good heart. So just because, and, and once again, knowing how to do that 
because there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. So you can know every scripture, but you may not know how to minister that scripture. So you have to learn how to minister the scripture so that it does not place the person in further bondage or it does not actually hurt their spirit. We have a lot of people walking around in church hurt right now. They're, they're just being hurt all the time in church. They're going to church and we have leaders and, and people in the church that are actually hurting these people because they're putting them in further bondage because they're telling them, you know, oh, you're a sinner or you're a disobedience or this, that, and the other thing. And they're not actually leading them down the path of deliverance or healing or actually setting them free. So that is a major problem in the church. So in any time you take scripture and you use it outside of the intended use and you don't use wisdom when you use the scriptures or you, you take the scriptures out of context so that you can make a point or that you can or you can manipulate or uh, uh, manipulate a situation um, that is uh, perversion. That is a form of perversion. It's, it, and perversion is not just dealing on a sexual level. Many of us think that perversion is is just oh you know you're a pervert and you know you're dirty. Well yes, pervert. There is a there is a form of sexual perversion, but that sexual perversion is taking your body outside of God's intended use for your body. So for example, if you have sexual intercourse outside of marriage or you have any type of sexual relations outside of marriage, then of course that is considered to be perversion. So you do not want to, you have perverted your body from God's intended use for it because what? The marriage bed is undefiled. But that means that if you're not married, that means that that bed is defiled. All right. So we have to understand what do these things mean? So now let's go back to the original or the first perversion. The actual the first perversion of God's word was by Satan himself when he talked to Eve. So what God told them, do not eat from the tree of good and evil and and or else what you will surely die. OK, now. Some theologians, some people speculate that that didn't actually mean physical death. What it meant was it was spiritual death, that you would, you would eventually, you would, or you would be open to spiritual death, okay? Because at that point, once you knew good and evil, then also the forces of evil were able to overtake you, all right? And so, it, and so it, it, on many ways and on many levels, and also the fact that at that time, some theologians also theorized that there, that there was the body was not ever intended to die. Because if you notice, like back in the Old Testament, people lived hundreds of years. Whereas nowadays, if, if a person lives to 100, we consider that a great feat. But back in, in early biblical times, of course, we know that there were people that lived 900 years. And so almost a, a, an entire uh, millennium. So there were people that lived an entire millennium uh, almost. So we know that, that at that particular point, that, that physical and spiritual death came in. Okay, at the original sin. So the, the, this original perversion, when it took place, how did how did Satan do it? Well, what Satan did was he took God's word and he twisted it to Eve. And what did he say? He said, "Surely you will not die." And he he so he used he used God's words, but he twisted them. He perverted them. He took them and took them out of context. And he said, "Oh, surely you will not die." And so and so now you know. Uh, now, all of a sudden, uh, Eve feels like, oh, well, this is all right. And then what does she do? She falls into sin and into disobedience to God, right? And that is what perversion is intended to do. Perversion, when any time we we pervert something, what it's intended to do is to make us to fall into sin or disobedient or fall out of God's will. So, and, 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 now let, me, and let me also say this. A lot of times we do it and not because um, because we 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 uh, we know everything, but a lot of times we do it out of ignorance. So a lot of times we fall into sin and disobedience out of ignorance. The Apostle Paul uh, he he talked about how a lot of the things that he did he did out of ignorance. Of course, he was killing people in the early church. Okay, he was going around persecuting and having people in the early church killed, but he thought that he was doing God a service. 
at that particular time, he thought he was doing something right for God because he was like, well, what is this new, what is this new doctrine? And all of a sudden, you know, because he didn't understand the doctrine of Christ and he didn't understand grace and he, didn't, and he didn't understand that dispensation and that this new dispensation had been entered into. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a lot of times we do things out of ignorance. So that's why come the Bible tells us that our people perish for a lack of knowledge. So one of the basic ways to, to not fall into perversion is to know the scriptures, is to know God's word. If you know God's word, then it's hard for people to twist it up on you. And the other thing is, especially when it comes to these leaders that are deceiving and are perverting people by twisting the words or taking them out of context so that they can use them for their own either personal gain or in order to keep you in the bind or to manipulate you, that's how you understand that, this, that, that if it's not in the Bible, if God didn't say it, and if God didn't speak it to you, then why would you be falling for anything that's not there? So whenever somebody preaches or teaches a word, you should always go back and you should check behind that person to make sure that what they taught you is sound doctrine. Okay, don't just take the pastor's word for it, the teacher's word for it, the preacher's word for it, the evangelist's word for it, the elder's word for it. You don't want to just take their word for it because you need to find these things out for yourself. And as you start to find these things out for yourself, and as you start to search the scriptures, then what happens is, is that you'll become more knowledgeable. And we know that one of the spirits of God is what? The, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of wisdom. And once again, Wisdom is different from knowledge, and, and a lot of people get that twisted. See, because you can know things, but you might not have the wisdom to use them. So in other words, you might know a scripture, but you may not have the wisdom to, to be able to use that scripture. So what you have to do, what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that if we lack wisdom, that we ask God for it freely. And that's what we need to do. So we, so whenever we ask God for that wisdom, then what we want to do is we want to pray, ask God for wisdom, and then what does the scripture tell us? That God will give us that wisdom freely. So as we go through and we start to study more about the spirit of perversion or about the unclean spirit of perversion, I should say, then we understand what that's all about. And then, so, so for example, anytime that somebody is, is telling you about a, about a certain scripture, then go back, study that scripture out, pray about that scripture. That's another thing, praying on scripture, because what did, what did uh, God uh, tell Joshua? He told him, he said that whenever you, you study scripture, that you should meditate in the scripture. And meditation is a form of repetition or a form of prayer. Meditation is actually prayer. So what you want to do is you want to pray into that scripture to find out exactly what that scripture means in the spirit. Because just because you get a scripture does not mean that you that God has, has given you revelation on the scripture because there's a difference in the type of revelation that you can get. So now... The other fact is, and, 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 and so let's go on some things that are happening right now in the world. So, for example, we have things like the Internet. We have all this new technology. Well, once again, let's go back to what the Scripture said. The Scripture said there was nothing created that wasn't created by God. Everything in the creation is God's. Whether, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, we know that everything. Sometimes uh, we need the enemy in order to motivate us into another position or to motivate us us into a higher level or or to, or to transition us into a new season and so a lot of times we get pressure from the enemy from uh, these these demonic or satanic forces this uh, if you will spiritual wickedness in high places or the principalities of other powers uh, that exist in the world so many times those things are given to us just because why because it'll it'll either put us into sin and disobedience or it'll catapult us further into God's will and into God's assignment and purpose for our life. So a lot of times we have to realize that when, when attacks come or when we, are, when we are entering into these things like perversion, like the unclean spirit of perversion, a lot of times it's presented to us so that we will be able to, to, to be thrust into what God has for us. So for example, 
a lot of people in the, in the body of Christ, they talk about the technology that we have. So people, uh, I see people criticizing like the internet or, or criticizing uh, different uh, new forms of technology, cable television or, or whatever, what have you, whatever it is, satellites and that type of thing. But we know that everything was created by God for his purpose. So once again, we go back to, to our, our definition of perversion and say anytime we take something and we use it outside of God's will or outside God's intended use for it or in an evil or demonic way, then that's perversion. So, for example, the Internet. Right now, you're probably watching this video on the Internet. Well, the reason why I created this video is not outside of the will of God. I'm not trying to be outside of the will of God. Even if I made a mistake or even if, if some of the doctrine that I'm that I'm presenting to you right now is not what you would call sound, still in my heart, my heart is pure and I'm and I'm delivering this message so that it would help you out, so that it would give you a a, a way out of perversion or that it would teach you about perversion so that you would gain the knowledge about what perversion is and then you wouldn't fall into the trap of perversion. Okay? Okay? And it's all being delivered to you where? Over the internet. But then we have other people that are using the internet to do things like pornography or they got websites where they're talking about racism or hate crimes or all kinds of other things or, or you know, doing different things that are outside of the will of God. Why? Because they're evil. And we know that anything evil is outside of his will, even though it exists we know that it's not God's will for our life. So as we go forth, we see that, hey, the internet is there and, it, and, it, and, and, it's, and it's around, but it, it depends on how you use it. So once again, it's not the creation, you know, and the same thing, and I can even relate this to money because we get in a lot of, you know, uh, one of the major problems in the body of Christ is people talk constantly about money, but you got to have money in order to survive. But the thing is, is that where the perversion comes in and even where, where in the, in the book of Timothy, where they talk about the love of money. And then if you, if you read those verses, it's talking about the reason why the love of money is the root of all evil is because what it does is it makes you make a covenant with money instead of making a covenant with God for his blessing. See, the, so that's the difference. See, the perversion comes when instead of making a covenant with God, I make a covenant with money. He said, because they, they, because they, they made, they coveted money and what, and then they fell away from the faith. Because now what happens, instead of trusting God as being my source and my provider, Jehovah Jireh, instead of trusting God as being my source and my provider, I have now relied on money and, 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 and my wealth in order to be my source. And that's, and that's where people fall away. So when they fall into the perversion of money, that's what, that's what God, that's how come he says it's, it's difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. Why? Because most rich people, they make their covenant with money and not with God. But there are a lot of rich people that have made their covenant with God. For example, in the Bible, Abraham. Abraham was one of them. Abraham made his covenant with God, and God made him rich. The same thing with, with David and Solomon. They made covenants with God. They didn't make their covenant with money. They made their covenant with God. With, with Solomon, it was, the, it was him asking for wisdom and knowledge to be able to judge correctly over God's people. That was the covenant that he made. So, he, so God said, well, since you didn't ask me for everything else, then I'm just going to go ahead and add the money to you. Right. So that and, and, and that is the difference is what is it's the intended. Once again, it's the intended use. It is the 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 way that you are presenting it. And that's what either makes it perverted or not. That's what either makes it perversion or not. What are you going to do with God's creation? And once again, you can take it down to everything, your body, uh, the way you even even, um, you know, how you how you treat people. You know, it, you can you can use perversion. Perversion is done in a lot of different uh, areas and now so now how do I how do I get rid of the, the of the of the spirit of perversion how do I get rid of the unclean spirit of perversion well if I'm trying to get rid of the unclean spirit of perversion then what I have to do is I have to I have to work from what I have to work from knowledge and from wisdom okay because if I don't then and and then I have to listen 
to God's voice. And I also have, so, I, so it's going to come through several different things. And the first thing is, uh, I always say prayer, because you know, if, if you're getting ready to do something, right? And you know, you know, if, if, even if it, because you've got a, you got that, the Holy Ghost, first of all, listen to the Holy Ghost. You know, I shouldn't say that first. So listen to the Holy Ghost. Pray and listen to the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is going to direct your path. It's going to tell you what to do. So that's how come he says, don't lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your path. So if you acknowledge God in everything that you do and you say, God, what is? what do you want me to do? Ask, ask. The Bible, one of the principles in the Gospels is ask, seek, and knock, right? Ask, seek, and knock, right? Because if you ask, ask God. And it says, even with the wisdom, he said what? He would give it to you freely, okay? So if you lack wisdom, he said ask, and he'll, and he'll give it to you freely. So ask him, well, how am I supposed to use this? How am I supposed to do this? What am I supposed to do? And the other thing is, and eventually that, that voice that's in the back of your head will tell you the proper way. So you need to constantly have a conversation going on with God so that you don't fall into the spirit of perversion because it's very easy. And like I said, even, and a lot of people think that it's just evil people or whatever that are trying to get you to fall into the spirit. And like I said, a lot of times it's your own pastor, it's your own elder, it's your own bishop, it's your, it's, you know, it's your own apostle, it's whoever that's up there that's trying to deceive you by using things out of order. Or out of context. And once again, we know that God is a God that does everything decently and in order. So once again, get the spirit of knowledge. Get that knowledge. Get that wisdom. And once you get the knowledge, then try to get the wisdom to understand how to use the knowledge. Because like I said, those are two drastically different things. And I don't think we really teach that a lot, but we need to teach that. Look, when you find out something, then find out how to use it. I mean, it's okay. You know, it's like if you got a if you got a shovel, but you don't know what it. You know, you say, okay, this is a shovel. Well, you know, it's a shovel, but nobody ever told you how to use it. You know, then I mean, what good is it? You know, people have tools all the time. We have tons of tools in the in the scriptures uh, to fight different things, but we don't use them. Just like just like we know that prayer. So for it, it, and that's a good example. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving me this example. That prayer. One of the things is, is that we, the, the Bible tells us that, fra that prayer has to be fervent, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, which means that the unaffected, unfervent prayer of the unrighteous ain't going to avail you nothing, right? So, if, you know, so we can just use it to the opposite and say, well, so, so we have to learn what effective prayer is, what fervent prayer is. We, you have to learn because you can just pray but if the prayers ain't effective, then what good is it? So once again, we've taken something that's a tool, prayer is a tool, but if we don't use it the correct way, if we don't use wisdom with it. So for example, what, is the, what does the scripture say? One of the things that the scriptures tell us is that when we pray, we have to believe what it is we prayed when we prayed it. We have to have faith that when we prayed it, that it already came to pass so that it was already done in the spiritual realm. And if we don't believe something when we pray it, then... Our prayer is not effective. The other thing is, what is the what does the scripture tell us? It tells us that, you know, what is being fervent. Fervent is that we go boldly before the throne of grace. You know, not 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 as a wimp or not, you know, coming up there standing, but we have to know what it is that we're asking God, and then we have to go for it, and we have to go for it boldly, and then ask with a pure heart. Because what the, the scriptures tell us that that we have not because what we ask amiss. And what is asking amiss? It means I ask is something that's either outside of the will of God or asking something outside of not having a pure heart about it, you know? And, and so, so we have to look at these things. So those are tools. Yes, and we, we have the knowledge that, yes, we can pray, but then we have to have the wisdom on how to pray and what to pray for. And, of course, everything has to be within the will of God. So, so when you're looking at these different uh, uh, spirits that I'm talking about lately, you know, it, the thing about it is, is that, and once again, how do we identify these things? Because we know that the fruit of the spirit will manifest 
if we are in the proper spirit. We know that those things in Galatians chapter five will manifest if we are operating in kingdom principles. If we are not operating in kingdom principles, then we have things that will manifest in the flesh. So you do not, once again, you do not have to be super spiritual in order to see these things manifest. Okay, because as soon as they as soon as they manifest, then something is going to happen. Right. You're going to see the fruit. That's why that's why Jesus told us that a, a tree is known by its fruit. So you'll be able to see it. It's not, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it's not talking about seeing it in the spiritual realm. It's talking about being able to see it in the natural realm, because even when the Apostle Paul was writing in the in Galatians, what did he say? He said that the, the that the things of the, the flesh are manifest that are these so you can see them. All right. So once again, you don't have to be super spiritual to be able to figure these things out. So anytime you are not operating within the fruit of the spirit of God, you know that there is some type of unclean spirit that is available or that is operating in, in, in the person or in you. So and as soon as you do, then what are you going to do? You need to you need to do some things in order to get deliverance from those spirits. So once again, the, the, the spirit of perversion is any time we take something outside of God's intended use for it. Any time we take something out of what God intended for it to be used for, and, and all once again, all creation is his. But if I take it outside of his will or outside of his intended use, and then I try to use it either for manipulation or something else, and it, and it causes me or someone else to fall into sin or disobedience, then the unclean spirit of perversion is present. And once again, once that is present, then I'm going to have to do some things, either praying, fasting, etc., in order to get those spirits out of me or out of the other person. All right. Now, that's about all the time I have. I thank you for tuning in. Uh, we, we, we just hope that God blesses you abundantly. And remember that Jesus is Lord. You have been watching Power in Jesus. If these messages have been a blessing to you, please send a love offering to Wonderful Temple, V Security Drive, Greenville, South Carolina, 29611. If you desire prayer, please call 864-757-4033. That's 864-757-4033. Remember, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Even in your sins, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem you from your sins and give you eternal life. Come to Jesus just as you are. He can repair you and restore you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus saves.